What is going on guys? This is Noah with Northern Scavenger and welcome to this week's video. So it is Friday after work and I'm here in Nova Scotia with my buddy Matt, who you guys know, doing a two night trip not too far from Halifax on a duck hunting Thanksgiving weekend excursion. The leaves have started to change colors, it's very crisp in the air and you can tell that the seasons are changing. This is a glamping trip, not many portages, lots of good food, it's going to be a good time. Whenever I'm involved, there's never a shortage of food. Gourmet Matt. <laughs> I reckon it's going to be pretty windy out there. We're in a pretty protected spot here and <laughs> the wind is ripping. I don't know what direction it's going to be in so it's hard to tell if we're going to have a, a tailwind or a headwind. What are the chances of us getting a, seeing a duck this evening? I feel like it's pretty good. There's lots of ducks on these lakes, it's just a matter of where they are. I think, I think it'll just be we'll end up spotting one and try and put a sneak on them. I'm just taking a peek to see if there's any right here. I don't know, keep our eyes open and I'm sure we'll see a couple. We got the gun ready to go just in case you see some ducks along the way. Oh no, oh no, soaker already. Oh, that sucks. Oh. Filled the boot. That really sucks. Do you, to, do you have a pair of socks you want to change into? I only brought one pair. S seriously? Yeah. No. I didn't think I'd get a soaker in the first 10 minutes. Dude, rookie mistake. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. You didn't bring another pair of socks? No. What would I need another pair of socks for? <laughs> oh man. It'll be alright. I do, I do have another pair of shoes. I'll, I'll just go sockless in my camp shoes. Looks like you're going to be warming those. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I went full on over it. Dude, we just had this conversation like five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, it's mid-October and Matt has a soaker with not an extra <laughs> pair of socks. We're still touching shore. <laughs> <laughs> on the plus side, the winds calmed down, so that's... There you go. Some good news. <laughs> I think I can dry these out on the fire. Well, not the boot, that's going to be wet. Well, you don't have much of a choice now. Look. I just wasn't paying attention. I was like pushing the canoe off and I just took like a really stupid step. Always bring spare socks too. And on this one I was like, F it, we're just going like up the road. They're going to be gone two nights camping in the same spot. I'm not even, I, I literally brought no spare clothes other than extra sweaters. <laughs> like this is what I have. <laughs> because like I always pack spare shirts and spare underwear and then they stay in the bag the whole time and I never use them. Well, screw it. I'm not. I'm not doing it. There you go. That's the uh, river guys telling you to always bring a spare yeah. pair. The one time I just say screw it, I'm saving space and not packing spare clothes. We'll see if he gets hypothermia, folks. <laughs> we made it just in time before the sun sets completely. We have a shotgun with us. We're gonna be doing a little duck hunting on this trip. Coming in here, paddling down the middle of the lake, Matt spots six or seven ducks coming at us, and I had a perfect opportunity to get my first duck, and I totally blew it. I messed up. Hopefully I have another opportunity because that was an amazing opportunity that I messed up on, so. Thinking about that tonight. The sun's below the horizon now, and we only have a few, I would say 15 minutes before it gets totally dark, so we're gonna get some firewood going and get Matt, Matt's sock on the fire to, to start drying out. So, I scavenged up some, some bags. Whoa! <laughs> How'd you do that so quickly? I think it's like hardwood flooring. <laughs> That's a find. There's like a whole pile of uh, cut dry wow. wood here. For Thank you, whoever is here last. That's uh, trail magic, man. We'll have to make sure to do the same for the next people. Yeah, we'll chop up a whole bunch. Oh, that's sweet though. I think we should uh, we should reconfigure this into a like a U. Yeah, we can do what we want. Yeah, rather it's Thanksgiving than... weekend. Oh yeah, that's not a good fire. But yeah, no, I think we want to get warm. No, the, qu the quintessential uh, Nova Scotia campsite grill. That's probably the fanciest one we've ever found. Someone's front gate. Yeah. <laughs> If you guys are familiar with Nova Scotia camping, rarely do you find a spot that's eight by eight feet that's relatively flat 
with no uh, no deadfall over it. So this is a huge find for us. This is an amazing site. What this I tell you, best campsite I've ever stayed at. Doing cold weather trips in the fall when everything is dry is so much different than doing them in the spring when everything's wet. It's like, oh, you want a fire? Just instant inferno. A decent uh, fire going. Yeah. We got some hardwood here, folks. You have the option to always go hardwood. Burns higher BTUs and for longer periods of time. Matt, do you know what a BTU is? British thermal unit. So you're starting an exothermic reaction and you're releasing the energy contained in the wood. So because it's denser, it has more energy? Yes, yes. Do you know why it's denser? I, I don't actually know. Because it stops growing for six months of the year or something like that. So like it, it has a short window where it grows. It only grows for a few months. Your tree rings end up so tightly packed it makes the wood denser, whereas softwoods that grow year-round expand more rapidly and results in less dense wood. I think that's pretty good. We're having, <laughs> having some donairs. Although, I mean, it's a pretty Ontario move to just, like, come here and start throwing green peppers in donairs. <laughs> Is that how the thing is? I think that's a little offside, to be honest. <laughs> You just didn't know, that's all. I just didn't know. You just didn't know. Onion and tomato is the uh, the traditional. I'm not ashamed to admit that I, I do enjoy the green pepper in there, in the mix. Morning, guys. It's probably about 7.30 in the morning. The sun is not up yet, but it is a pretty warm morning and there's some of those curdling clouds in the distance there and as we know from the lost shore video 24 hours potential rain we're gonna be doing some exploring around the, the lakes and try to find some ducks for dinner tonight oh that's so dry had your foothold out last night good i got the sock mostly dry on the fire it was just a little bit damp in a few spots but if you have a sock that's slightly damp just you just put your sock on before bed and then crawl into your sleeping bag and then when you wake up in the morning your socks are warm and dry. Your sleeping bag and your body heat will just suck that moisture out of whatever's damp on you if you, if you wear it into your sleeping bag with you. So I'm just going to keep wearing my camp shoes as long as I can and not put on my wet boot. <laughs> did you get that wet boot dry this morning or did you, did no. You no, that's fine no. for the rest of the trip. All right. Gathering some wood for the fire. I came across a large pine tree with big boughs that are dead, and that's a great spot to find fat wood. Dry wood that's saturated in resin. See, it almost seems like it's outlined in a, in a darker, richer red. That is fat wood. And what's great about fat wood is it burns very, very well. Let's tell us on the market, the black market. Look how resin filled that is stuff. Dude, this is like, it's like gummy. kind of want to just chew on it. It's like a toothbrush, no? I'm going to start a new channel. Bush, Bush, Bushcrafter Noah. Fatwood specialist. <laughs> I feel like if you type that into Google, you'll get a very different result. <laughs> Matt has graciously taken care of breakfast this morning. Look at that. Is that just some thick bacon? What do you think that is? Half inch? Quarter, maybe an eighth. If you round it up, that's about an inch. <laughs> round it up. If, if, yeah, if anything less than an inch gets rounded to an inch, then yeah, it's an Regardless of the exact size, we're working with some thick bacon this morning. Look at that. You can only fit half of this in the pan. I'm just going to touch them all. I never cook bacon in the woods like this. It's always like granola bars or oatmeal, but... Yeah, you're a psychopath. Where we could bring a cooler this time, <laughs> I figured I'd treat myself. I don't know how you can just eat cold granola bars for breakfast. <laughs> so I'm a man on the go. How's your boot? 
fine now. Stuck my foot in a garbage bag with my dry pants and socks. So it is pretty windy out and there's a lot of gusts. So the theory is, the standing theory, is the ducks are going to be in small ponds protected from the wind with what type of terrain, like duckweed? Yeah, just like generally weeds and stuff like that. So we're going to try to find some sheltered bays and some small ponds to, to scope. What's the situation here? The situation is it's really, really windy. We gotta go that way. It was all for nothing because we came back duckless. What's the terminology for that, coming back duckless? Skunked, I guess. The wind is very strong. It took us a while to get back to the other side of the lake. And we stopped off in this bog because we're gonna harvest some cranberries. Because it's not a Thanksgiving dinner without some cranberries. When you're searching for cranberries, you wanna find a bog. Do you want me to film you explaining that? No, I think that that's as far as that explanation goes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, is it anything goes? Yeah, I don't know what we're looking for. I feel like that's not quite far enough along. That might be a bad cranberry to use. But like, I think any of these ones, they're a little more. Any of these darker ones, I feel like are good. Yeah, I feel like I feel like this guy's probably fine. Not a bad haul from like five minutes of work there. These cranberry bogs here in Nova Scotia, they're everywhere, and there's so many cranberries that you could come back here and pick like bagfuls of them. We've arrived back at camp. Fun morning exploring around, checking the bays, checking the small ponds for ducks. We're gonna keep it low key for the next few hours. I am actually gonna have a beer. And not only any beer. Breton Brewery Spiced Up Pumpkin Ale. I brought two different pumpkin style beers this weekend and I'm gonna see which one's the better beer in terms of quality. And that's it, just quality. We got the Breton Brewery Spiced Up Pumpkin Ale and the Propeller Brewing Co. Pumpkin Spiced Ale. Cheers. Happy Thanksgiving. Pretty good. I don't know how much I would like just drinking pumpkin spiced ales on a regular basis, but tis the season, a couple will be good. Decent flavor, not bad. We're gonna head out for the evening hunt. Gonna head to the pond that we scudded earlier today. Hopefully get a duck or two. The wind has not slowed down. It has shifted to the west. I don't know how this is gonna affect us, but it's still there. This has been the duckiest spot that we found. So we're hanging out until dusk. Hopefully they'll come in and Matt will get a shot off. Or Noah. I have more faith in you. <laughs> I can get a shot off, but like if we have one opportunity, I don't want to be the one to shoot it. You got one? <laughs> <laughs> Just dreaming. What happened? Nothing happened, really. As a duck guide, you led us astray. That's why I don't duck guide professionally. <laughs> you nice. promised at least three ducks. I promised that.
holy potatoes. Jesus. Yeah, I didn't know how many we would want. We probably don't have to cook all of these. Peppers from the garden. A couple of hot peppers to mix in there. What is that? That's uh, bear lard from a bear that I harvested this fall. One of the first things I did was I uh, took all the fat and melted it down in a pot, removed the solids, and then what you're left with is a shelf-stable oil. You could use this in making pastries. You can use it just as a cooking oil. You can use it to, you know, if your hands are getting dry, you can use it as a moisturizer or like a lip balm. Basically anything you could, you would use uh, like any other kind of oil for, you can use this. I managed to sneak out uh, earlier this week and shoot a few ducks. So there's uh, the breasts from two ducks, four duck hearts, and four gizzards. And then fresh cranberries that we harvested today, as you guys know. Oh, this is a feast. This is gonna be good. And a couple pops to keep the boys lubricated. Lubricated. <laughs> Man, this is a spread. That's looking really good, actually. So as a follow-up from earlier today, I am now gonna try the second pumpkin ale by Propeller. There's a little more cinnamon aftertaste with this one, but I feel like there's more of a kick with the spiced up. One more sip, just to confirm. I would say there is a little too much spice with this one. So if I was to go back to the store, I think I'd get a spiced up Breton Brewery compared to a Propeller Pumpkin Ale. That's a bold statement, Noah. Are you worried about causing a rift in the Nova Scotia craft brew industry? I'm, I'm just a man with a, uh, an opinion. It's still good though, I'm definitely gonna drink it. Just to free up some frying pan space because we're gonna do the duck in the big frying pan. Let's take our bear oil. Now that it's out of the cooler, it's sort of starting to turn liquidy, but you can see it's just nice white. That's rendered bear fat is exactly what that is. So I'm gonna put a good couple gloms into the frying pan. So here comes our duck meat. Whoa. First time trying duck heart. Good. You like Good. it? Yeah. Yeah, it almost tastes like it tastes like red meat. Yep. Yeah, it's solid. Nice. Let's get into the rest of it. Let's do it. A couple of nice duck breasts. Fresh foraged cranberry sauce. Sweetened with brown sugar. I'll dress my duck with that. That's looking pretty good. It smells amazing. Yeah, good. That smells amazing. Duck's probably cooked a little more than it needed to be, but so there's the duck, and we'll scoop up some cranberry sauce. Mmm. Oh my god, that's good. That's good stuff. That's really good. That cranberry sauce really makes it. Thanksgiving dinner. We got our, you know, duck, not turkey, cranberry sauce, potatoes, and then mixed it up with mushrooms, peppers, and asparagus. Bushcrafty Thanksgiving dinner. Awesome. Morning, folks. Well, looks like we got some weather last night. It rained heavily for most of the night, and now we have a strong headwind. Did you hear the coyotes last night? Yeah, I did. That was cool. Pretty eerie. It looks like an astronaut. <laughs> High tech. All right, guys, we had a quick morning at camp, had some breakfast, packed up camp, and we're gonna head back to the city. 
It was a fun couple of days out here. Didn't have much of a plan. We just relaxed and enjoyed the fall colors. Tried to go for some ducks. Didn't have much luck, but it still had a fantastic duck Thanksgiving dinner. Thanks to Matt. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Lila, I sing the song for you. You're beautiful, even when you're down. You know this, and never talk yourself out of this. Lila.